Hi everyone, it's Mark here, and if you've ever had problems with uh, trying to get your bar cords ringing out cleanly, um, and, and you get lots of buzzing and, and stuff like that, or, or you just, just, just can't get the, get the correct fingering, um, then today's lesson should help you out. Um, what we're going to do is base it around a little um, three chord trick in the key of G, and uh, we're, we're going to, at the end of this lesson you should be able to play this. Excuse me. Cool. So that, that uses um, two of the most common bar chord shapes um, and then the other bar chord shapes could, should come quite easily after you've mastered those two. All right. Okay, what I'm going to do is just zoom into my fretboard, my left hand here, my right hand I'm not really going to bother about today because I'm, I'm assuming that you guys can see what I'm, what I'm doing or hear what I'm doing. Okay, off we go. So this is the area that, that we're going to be playing in. So this is uh, the third fret. All right. Now, common thing with playing bar chords is that most people think you, you can play them similar to what you play open chords with. Like on a C chord, hopefully you guys all know a C chord, but normally on a C chord you, you, you can put your thumb over the top quite comfortably and you, you can also use your thumb to mute out that bottom string which is obviously what you want to do on a C chord. You can A minor, you can do all this, leave your thumb over the top and it's a very comfortable way of playing. When you do bar chords though, if you put your thumb over the top you, you get muted strings because you can't flatten out your first finger properly to kind of it mutes out those strings that, that you really want to play. So what you do is if you bring your thumb into the obviously you can't see that, if you bring your thumb into the middle of the neck, hopefully you can kind of see where my thumb is now, yeah? So it's about there. So it's just underneath the curve of the neck and it's kind of pushing. If if if, if I had an arrow pointing to where my thumb's pointing, it's kind of pointing that way, so up to there. So then, when I put my, my first finger on the neck, I've got a good clasp, right, and the pressure's about right, so then you should be able to then go down the six strings, and they should all ring out quite clearly. If they're not, that probably means that your first finger needs to go either down or up. And you see on, on, on your finger, there's, you know, obviously the fleshy bits of your finger, then, then you have your joints, that joint, that joint there, all right, and then you have your fleshy bits. Normally it's the bits the fleshy parts that tend to allow the strings to mute yeah, or buzz. So that's the part that, that you want to try and avoid okay, um, with or in between the strings. So like at the moment I've got that first joint that's kind of in between strings one and two okay, and then this joint here is in between the strings like four and five so then either side of those two joints you've kind of got two strings so that it's holding them down. It takes a while to, to, to get it, alright? Another little tip that you can do is if you actually put your finger just about on the fret itself, so not in the fret space there, just about on the fret there, you just kind of roll it back like this and that kind of creates a bit of extra pressure somehow. Don't, don't ask me how, I don't actually know. But it's, it seems to give a little bit of pressure, all right? And then, to create the full bar chord sound, we then actually make it into a chord, and then we put our second finger here on the fourth uh, fret of the third string. Excuse, excuse me, there. And then your third finger on the fifth fret of the fifth string, and then your little finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string. Should sound like that, okay? But if it doesn't, persevere. Excuse me. Persevere, make sure you get your thumb, yeah, again, pointing upwards, so it's kind of pointing up to the sky about a 45 degree angle, okay? And then put down the second finger, third finger, and fourth finger. Okay, so that is what they call a sixth string root note major chord, because the root, that string there, the bottom string, is a G note, and this is a G major bar chord. So that's a six string root note chord. And then we then want to try out a fifth string root note chord. Now this is exactly the same thing, exactly the same theory. Our first finger, if you just saw that, I just moved down slightly. Um, what, what happens is, is that this is a fifth string root note chord, so then what, what I do is, I mute out the bottom string, 
with the tip of my first finger. Because I can't use my thumb over the top whereas it mutes out the strings with my first finger, can't get the pressure on. You, you then have your thumb, again, still pointing upwards to the sky. First finger covering five strings and lightly touching the bottom string. You can still use that slide back kind of technique, all right? But then this time we actually have two bars. And we put our third finger here on fret number five on strings two, three, and four. So we're actually pressing down with our, the kind of the first pad of your third finger. And notice how it's arched here, just there. You, you have to press, press that in quite hard. Then you want to make sure that your top string still rings out even when you've got that on at the third fret. It's being held down by my first finger there. What you might find is you get that muted out with the back of your third finger there. That means that you just need to go up a little bit more. And most human beings, most people, have this natural three string gap here, all right, on, on your third finger. Okay, so it should work with perseverance, but the thing is, is that you've got to, you can see there, it's being bent back quite a lot, all right? So you might, you might feel a little bit of discomfort when you're doing it, but you'll be all right. Okay, so that is a fifth string root note, major chord. Move that up, uh, that's a C chord, by the way. So rather than your friendly C like that, it sounds quite similar, but it's just got a higher note in it. It's got that E there as well. If you arpeggiate the chord and play each note one at a time, it's, it's got like a slightly different voice to it, what they call a, a different voice, all right? You can even do a C chord up here using that the, the G shape that we did. Yeah, but you can do it up here on the eighth fret. That's another C chord then, because all you've done is move that G, A, B, C, like that. Sounds pretty cool. Alright, and then, to turn that C chord into a D chord, we just move that up two frets. Okay, so like at the start of the lesson, you, you uh, saw me play the demonstration, the G. I'm hoping that you guys can all play the G and the C and the D bar chords now, okay? If you've got any problems at all, any, any questions, don't forget to go to www.randallsonguitar.co.uk um, and on this lesson there will be a comment box underneath this lesson, if that makes sense, and just ask me any questions there. Um, and I do get around to answering all my comments, okay? Um, and also, don't forget to, while you're on my website, don't forget to look on the top, um, top right, and you should see a like button. Don't forget to like that as well. And you can also follow me on Facebook, that's um, uh, Mark Randall from Guitar Tuition. And also, while, while you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon, guys. Mark out for now.